In recent years, we're seeing more and more violence caught on cell phone cameras. Oftentimes, that violence has depicted white police officers in fatal confrontations with black men. The last 72 hours alone have once again forced the nation to examine race, police brutality, and gun violence, specifically within the African American community. Please take one button. Thank sir. you. Look, I'm taking one of each. Stop acting like an Uncle Tom, motherfucker. When was the last time you seen an Uncle Tom with a scar on his face and one around his neck? Look, let me explain how today is going to go. First of all, we're going to lower our voices. We're gonna wait for everyone to get here and respect the room. Yeah, we'll see about that. Yo, it was good. How long is it gonna be, man? I hate to be that guy, but I got shit to do. Have a seat, please. Good, champ. See you, boy. You should only open your mouth if what you have to say is more beautiful than silence. Look, we all see what's happening to us out there, right? Yeah. To our young people. Same thing that happened to the Hebrews. And the exact same thing that happened with the original slave ships in Jamestown. Exactly. Nobody is letting my people go. They denying them home loans and throwing them in jail cells. And killing us in the street like cattle. Yeah, but we can fix that. We can fight that. Because one thing about God's plan is that it is always... What? All... On time? Yeah. Jesus been late like crazy lately. I'm not trying to die before my son is safe to walk to the store in a hoodie. If God's plan is to fight, I'm with it. Other than that, you can read holy passages and hold hands till we all look like Smurfs. Look, look, we've enough massive shootings. Here's what I think. I'm sure whatever you're about to say is like really important, like really important. But uh, this thing is gonna take all day, so whichever one of you is smart enough to figure this thing out, I'm my agent over here for me. The thing about smart people is they sound crazy to dumb people. Sorry, I'm late. Am I in the right room? Yes, you are. Please have a seat. Oh, yo, you're uh... Wait, what? What are we, a daycare now? Who the fuck is this? Look, let everybody sit down so we can continue, please. Why that miss? Average barbershop rhetoric. So not much. Look, it wasn't easy getting all of you in the same room. You were all handpicked because you each have a strategic influence on the community, whether it be business, sports, education, entertainment, and religion. Government? Yes, and government. You see, brothers, the machine that builds the pillars of society remain white, while the engine remains unapologetically black. Yes. I aim to stop that machine from running. Ah. And isn't that a big risk for you? Yes. Yes, it is. But complacency is a bigger risk. 
Injustice only happens when good men do nothing, my brothers. The how is right here, right now in this room, in all of us. We have to do whatever it takes to figure this out, no matter how long it takes. Our children's lives depend on it. All right, so, so what are we talking about here exactly? Like what plan are we trying to implement? Uh, time frame, resources, desired outcome, end goal. John 14, exactly. 27 speaks about peace. So whatever it is has to be concise, thoughtful, and a peaceful solution if we're going to take a stance. Yes. I apologize for cutting you off. Oh, the, the, the reality is a constant presence of social negligence, embedded systemic hurdles for only one portion of the population. Hey, when we had places like Black Wall Street, well stayed inside that community for more than a year. Black Wall Street, that a record label or something? No, no, no. In the early 1900s, in Greenwood, Oklahoma, Little Africa, as it was known back then, the gold standard for the black community. Black millionaires, lawyers, doctors, businessmen. It was a wonderful blueprint for a successful infrastructure. Yes. What happened to that? The white community burned it down to the ground in 1921. That shit wouldn't happen today. We were still swinging from the sycamore tree back then. Though social media didn't exist, the obstacles within the black community weren't any less. Mm, that's also why you're here. Exactly. A police killing pops up on my feed pretty often now. I couldn't imagine adding lynchings. That would have been too much. <clears throat> Let's just go off on these fools, man. What if Trayvon or any other victims were your son? Or your brother, college boy? I understand, but retaliation isn't the answer. So what is this, since you seem to know it all? He can't know more than yourself. He was a valedictorian, just like you were. Another thing we need to look at as a whole. Stop looking down on one another and realize that we're all kings in here. Hey, champ, you're defending your title in a couple of months, right? Yeah, man. Well, what do you think about what Kaepernick's doing? You know, standing up against police brutality by taking a stance, and what if you were to whoa, do it? Hold on, hold on, hold on. So for my third title defense, you're asking me not to stand during the national anthem, which will only be played because of me. Man, Kaepernick didn't even get a job. So you want me to let the media destroy my career like Howard did his? Say what you want, but Kaepernick Jersey still skyrocketed after that. Yeah, for about a month or two. Man, fuck the national anthem. That shit wasn't created for us anyway. Yeah, my folks told me the same thing. Actually, the dude who wrote it had slaves too. Francis Scott Key. Yes. Man, look, these are all I know. This takes care of a lot of people. I gotta talk to my wife first to see what she thinks. Reminder that it's not just your life at stake. You have two sons to think about. I talked to her about sitting and see if she will understand, which may lead to another fight, one I can't win. <laughs> yeah, yeah, you, you might lose that one. <laughs> Meanwhile, that orange that we call a president has taken our movement about police brutality and turns it into a discussion about disrespecting the flag. Now don't get me wrong. I enjoy seeing Kaepernick and all those other athletes take a knee, but if you want my opinion, it never should have taken that long. You are our Ali. I mean, as far as I'm concerned, this whole sitting down during the national anthem thing, it's a great message. But until it affects someone's bank account, it's not gonna get us far at all. Uh, so I'm not at all convinced. Um, my time is money. Gentlemen, I, I have to go. You see what I mean? And yeah, y'all want me to stay here and listen to this shit. Unbelievable. Another motherfucking Uncle Tom. It's people like you the reason why we can't never get nowhere. For people like me is the reason we've ever been anywhere, sir. The Montgomery boycott worked. Why? Because the bus company was tired of losing money, not losing respect. Let me tell you something. I don't have time to listen to social injustice when it's just people crying. That's noise. Are you afraid? Is money hungry? Because if you're afraid, Isaiah 41, 13 says, I am your father God. I will take hold of your right hand. It says, don't fear. 
I will help you. But if you're just money hungry, then you probably should leave. But before you walk out that door, ask yourself, how do you sleep at night knowing what's going on? Sir, I live in the penthouse. I sleep just fine. Your mother, God bless her soul, died as part of a great movement. And because of it, your family was denied her life insurance money. Your life insurance money. Don't speak about my mother. It's the truth. I still haven't been paid back enough. Will you ever? Because I know not getting that insurance money meant you had to drop out of school. I know that it meant you had to create yourself. It meant that you had to work your fingers to the bone for everything. Ah, oh, but God bless the child that's got his own. But see, I also know that you know better than anyone else in this room how important this is. Hell, even with that shift in power, I can't present anything that doesn't appeal to someone's bank account because it is all that will matter. Not Harvard, not Wharton, not black or white, not even rich or poor. Every idea, everything lives and dies on profit and losses. It's the American way. This has to be profitable, my brother. And you're the only one that can make that happen. I know anything is that there's only one color in America more supported than white. It's green. Okay. I have some overseas investments I can liquidate. Now understand this. From a financial standpoint, what we need to do is move money into black people's pockets. Yes. A lot of it. I'm talking about a lot of money, all right? There's an M&A deal in Atlanta for a string of black-owned grocery stores. Now, a larger chain wants to absorb them. What I can do is step in, I'll kill the deal, and I can personally approach the owner to expand the business. Well, how does that help us? Food. Food is the baseline commodity that retains importance regardless of the economy. A gallon of milk is the social barometer that lets you know how expensive or cheap it is to be an American. Mm -hmm. A shift of the African-American dollars into a basic household necessity such as food is our way to plug into the larger economic base. Mm -hmm. Now, a large enough shift in that one chain will mean I can guarantee a certain level of return to billionaire foreign investors. Now, billionaires don't care about race in America. Just money going into their pockets. How are we going to blindly guarantee them a return on profits? I'll put up five million. Five million dollars to create a business that speaks to African Americans, while also guaranteeing a five million dollar quarterly return. That should do it. You see, once I have happier investors, I can give more to open up their wallets willingly, eventually leaving me with the access to more millions. Is it just me? Uh, I don't get it. People who have more money than they know what to do with don't mind giving it away. Just losing it. If he can promise an immediate return, they'll give him more money. Bingo. I just need the grocery store to start to compete on a national level with the larger retail brands. How do you plan on doing that? I mean, besides magic. Him. Social media. Influence. See, I need this grocery store to become a part of black culture, which, as we all know, is the engine that drives American pop culture. Absolutely. Mm -hmm. yes. You see, once it's the hip place to shop, you can squeeze that piggy bank for everything they got. <laughs> I can pass legislation. Get them to put those chain of stores in Brooklyn. Disguise housing policy as economic incentives for urban planning. planning. All right. Right, right, right. And once you have those builders in place, you can erect a new business to help manage mixed income housing. Mm -hmm. 
I can present that to my congregation, but what I cannot do is scream to make sure that you have a certain population living in those new houses. It's morally against my being. That's fair. But I can guarantee you that you can have more than your fair share of qualified applicants. Yes. Creating pockets of affluence in the urban landscape. I see with a large enough concentration, I can convince a black bank to open up a branch. But understand something, guys. This is not a five-year game, all right? It's not even a 10-year game. This is a 20-year-long plan that we have to implement. We all have to be committed and on the same page with this. We just have to make sure the applications get in the right hands. Mm -hmm. Sounds amazing. Let's just make sure it stays all on track. Mm -hmm. All of you have been victims of police brutality at some point in your time. Even you. But none of you let it defeat you. Black Lives Matter is a powerful movement. But without a call to action, it's just a cool hashtag for social media and t-shirts. At this point, change has to come through concentrated action, not just lecture. Yes. That's the entire reason for the people in this room. What's your next book about? This, a conversation that helps rewrite black history. Something for our future generations. Yes. Future, huh? B-list actors never really save lives. I'm close to the C-list. No. Why do you don't know who I am? I mean, I'd love to be like Will or Denzel or Jamie, but I ain't sure I can really help this. Anybody check for me on the red carpet? Yo, you don't need a Golden Globe if I can help you go viral. Mm -hmm. Yo, like he said, I can take your 500,000 followers and double, quadruple that number. With more than 1 million black followers, we have the ear of white America, and they'll have to listen to what we have to say. Influence is like celebrity. Your fame is exactly what we need. I keep planning to change how people think. Education. An augmented affirmative action bill. A required universal African-American studies course led by your tax. A generation of students with reference to a different reality. A unified black consciousness. <sighs> I always wanted Baldwin to be required reading. Yeah, 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 whatever. All that sounds great. But what about my question from before? Everybody was just quiet and shit. I think everyone was quiet because no one had a sound solution. So what are we gonna do about these cops that are betraying their badges? And not all of them are bad. Never said that. But the majority of them are racist as fuck. So what are we going to do about that? Police are killing people every day. We know that. Yes. That's why we're here, to remind ourselves that there's something greater at play than the individual events in all of our lives. As we come together, we all have the ability to affect positive change against all this negativity that we witness daily in our lives and the lives of our loved ones. Right. Change begins in community. So no, that's right. Mm -hmm. Even the lone man has to call upon God. So let us call upon him and let us call upon each other during these dark times and be a light for the next generation. Your light can't stop bullets. You'd be surprised at what light can do. Now we can't change the way they view us, but we can change the way we view each other. We have to start treating each other as valuable, irreplaceable commodities. Diamonds yes. that become extinct when they're gone. Look, man, we need a plan, not prayer. Oh, we need prayer. Don't fool yourself. What? You heard me. You talking real tough to be a preacher, man. Oh, you so pro-black. Don't believe in God. Who said I don't? Oh, come on, guys. Gentlemen, you don't need to raise your voice to improve your argument. You may not need God. You can use a few of these. You trying to be funny, black man? Enough! I love being a black man. We are hated by many, supported by few, and stronger than all. And a praying man is a powerful man. We trying to solve something here. So chill the fuck out and allow us to continue. Because the last time I checked, I'm the only one who could throw hands up in here. 
Disrespect, Rev. We have to leverage one another. That's the only way any of this is going to work. A network of people accountable for one another in travel and community. Oh, we did that on campus. Students got together at night and traveled in groups so that we could fight against the attacks. Nice. Yeah, but we get murdered day and night. I, I thought I had an answer. I didn't. Sorry. No, it's okay. Nah, that's okay. It's okay. And that's why we're here. Exactly. Can't put our hands up. Can't keep our hands down. Comply, don't comply. Lying down on the ground. Walking home. Walking to the store. God forbid, reaching for a cell phone. Mm -hmm. Shit. Doing nothing. Can all get you shot. Is there any way to avoid a police bullet if you're black? It's a tough question to answer. All I know is I'm having a much more difficult conversation with my children about how to interact with police and their white families. Excuse me. Oh. I hope you don't mind, but I overheard the conversation and had to say something. Angela, what are you doing here? <laughs> How do you think I pay for school? I want to be on the right side of history. I'm a product of a society that will openly tell you that my life isn't worth anything. Too far. But this was attempted before, decades ago, correct? And here we are again, a new generation, same goals, but moving forward, we need to think outside this room. What about women? What about them? You can't just ignore us, or immigrants, or marginalized people in this fight right now more than ever. We need a united front. Everyone. And it's already inside of this room. Chill, what? Chill, Chill. Chill. what? It's my understanding that this is not a fix everybody else's problem meeting. This is a we need to fix our own damn problems first. Hold Let's on. We are sitting here as immigrants, as Muslims, as marginalized people of color. Those all include women. No movement has moved forward with just testosterone. We have become deliberate with how we move as a people. That idea has always rested on inclusiveness. Every black man that speaks up is executed. Every black woman serves time. We need to change that. And we will. We're trying to figure out the, the agenda so we can properly serve our community. Who is the leader here? He is. He represents the young people in this room. We need to partner with him. Great. Let's get started. Because my country isn't serving me as an African-American woman. I'm happy to have you here. Thanks. Really? We were selected for a reason. We don't know her. I do. Well, I didn't ask you that. Damn, bro. You gonna fight with everybody in here? I put my pride and my ego to the side? Why can't you? But was she chosen? We need to treat the janitor with the same respect as the CEO. You should have been here in the first place. My apologies, sister. No need. I heard everything I needed to hear. Where I choose to shop creates a buying power in said grocery store. I graduate in the largest numbers. I can shift an academic curriculum and through motherhood, a consciousness. Your career is your lifeline. I support and encourage you the most. And I wasn't handpicked, but I was chosen. My name is Senator Burns. To meet you. So I ask you, young sister, what's going to help us out there? Come on. Uh, I'm sorry. Father, what? 
in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses 